Did you see my review exercise posted? The review exercise for chapter 10 and 11, not yet. Uh, may, probably you can do those as a, like a test or like a quiz. So you give yourself some time, maybe one, one and a half hour, see how much you can finish and then can check the answer. Try to get a feeling of quiz. 70% the question will look like that. Uh, safely, I have to be safe. I put 70%. Huh? <laughs> it's a bit more, okay. I will consider. So this one, this review question. So if you like, you can do this as a quiz for yourself. And okay, you just set a time and then try how much you can finish. I think here got how many questions? Quite long or so, maybe two, two hours, two, three hours. Because here got 11, right? 11 questions. I think quiz will be around four questions, four or five questions. Yeah, in class quiz. Yeah, one hour. Yeah. So here about three hours and this be more than three hours. Yeah, so you can do this, try do this without looking at the answer and then also post a solution here already if you want to check solution. Okay. And I think we are ahead of the schedule. So um, if you try out any question, uh not sure how to do or why can do like that. You can pause on the forum and then we will do it in the class together. Okay. So well ahead of the schedule, so you can uh, feel free to pause questions here and then we will do it in front of the class together. Okay. So normal practices you can do it yourself, but maybe you meet some tricky questions or just any problem you met, you can put here. And then we will do it in the class together. Okay. Yeah. Make sure you try those exercises. So for some exercises, right, you guys say, maybe I do it before already, like the dot product, uh, cross product. You can skip it if you want. Okay. But if you want to uh, practice again, you can practice. Okay. So the tutorial I put is just a guideline for me. If you want to do more than what I gave, it's okay. If you feel that mm, I already get a feeling of this, okay, so you can skip it first. Okay, just focus on what you need the most first. Okay, and then we will come back and pick up again. Okay, so I put a lot of questions, right? There seems a lot of questions here, but they are like from different type of question. The tutorial. For some part, I will put like I put about about two questions because I think maybe you need some practices. So I choose some of them. I choose two from each section. Some of them I just pick one. Yeah. Yeah. So I already posted chapter ten review exercises. I also put up chapter twelve already review exercises. Okay, let me see. I got one question coming in. Let's see. Let me share this. What's the issue with this interview again? I forgot already. Uh, oh, miss one R, uh, miss one R. Uh, yeah. mm, I will, I will fix just, just missing an R. There's some uh, mistake. I think there's an R from Y, there's an R from other places. So this one also, I miss a minus sign. This one already fixed. And this is a minus sign. So in this uh, polar graph, polar conic section, right? Make sure you are 
looking at D with sine or without sine. Just need to make sure. Okay. Make sure that D is with sine or without sine. All these uh, parameter here. Are they without sign or with sign? Okay, these are just a minor problem I'll fix. Uh, I think next in the next class I will bring up some area question. Polar area. And you try to find intersection between in area that intersect by two polar graphs. Let's pass them over. Try and bring some question. Any more question? From the rest. Uh, I think there's another one. I think I didn't let me show this one. Yeah, if you try to graph this part of uh polar curve, right? You can see that choose a parameter interval that produces the entire curve. Okay, remember that I said last time uh, when you go from 0 to 2 pi, and then after 2 pi, you might repeat the curve again. Okay, so the question here is saying, saying that pick an interval such that you can produce the whole curve. Okay, so the curve, the period maybe is within 0 and 2 pi, or 0 or 4 pi, or 0 to 3 pi. So you need to determine different. Um, parameter interval here such that you can produce the entire curve. And then it turns out that for this question 59, right, the period is 0 to 4 pi. Okay. After 4 pi only on the polar graph, the, the shape repeats itself. If you try that. Actually, all the question here is quite hard. 59 to 64. Okay. I think this question here is quite hard. So if you can do this, then you should be fine with the normal question. Yeah. The hardest one, I think, is this with name one, especially this one. This one, pick man curve. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me know if you have issue plotting this. 59 is the one I pick, is it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think this one is the most doable one, I guess. I haven't tried the rest. I think this tangent to the core tangent one is uh, a bit crazy. Tangent. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, guys, that's all. Any question or no? So far. Uh, so let's pick up from what we stopped last time. Where did we stop? Chapter 13, right? Chapter 13. Okay, last time we say that we want to extend the idea in calculus one to uh, multi-dimensional space, right? So if you can do differentiation on a uh, real value function, and then we want to do it for vector value function, meaning we do it component by component, right? So we differentiate x component, y component, and z component. So let me write down. 
So in this chapter 13 setting, we have a function from R to R3. Okay. So you can imagine this is a particle. Okay. You got a time variable. So given one time, you need to give me a set of coordinate using a vector. Okay. So these are three functions here. Okay. So these are all functions. These are all functions. Okay. So functions is from R to R again. Okay. So but we got three functions here. So we got three R. So that's why we got R three. Okay. That's all. Okay. So pretty much uh, chapter 13 is like run over what we did again. Okay. In three dimensional. So let's see what we get. So we will repeat again. In general, a function is a rule that assigns each element in the domain an element in the range. So a function is, I give you one input, you give me one output. Okay, this is the function. A vector value function, okay, vector value is what? This function gives you a vector, a okay, vector value. So we give you a vector. Or we call it, we just call it a vector function for short. Sure. Is simply function a function whose domain is a set of real number, also taking real number. If you like, you can imagine this real number is just a time, and whose range is a set of vectors. So it gives me a set of vectors. Imagine now. Can you imagine. So you your mind should have this picture in your mind. Okay, I give you a t. You give me a vector. And then this vector depends on my t. So every uh, every component in the vector is a real number. Okay. Every component will have their function. Okay. So you should keep this in your mind. I mean, uh, we actually encountered this example before right? in R2. So in the very first lecture, Okay, what we did is we draw a circle, which is um, cos t and sin t. Okay, so you should keep this in your mind. So I can also embed this into R3. Okay, what do we mean by embed? I can draw this circle in R3 as well. Okay. But which height I want to put uh, depends. I can just put at zero. Okay, so what I do here is, let me give you a picture here. It's nice. So in R2, we have the planar graph and we have planar graph like this okay so in r3 we can also embed the circle inside r3 so how do i do that so we got here x y x y z in this case so i embed embed on the s y plane okay so um, Remember that last time we used the horizontal tangent, vertical tangent to somehow determine our shape, right? Remember? Okay. So in 3D case, we also can do similar things. So we so last time you said, ah, yeah, very hard to draw a 3D shape. Okay. So if you can sketch the 3D shape, at least you got some image in your mind. Then later when we compute the partial derivative, similar to this horizontal tangent, vertical tangent. So we'll see how uh, how the surface curve up or curve down. Okay. So I think um, the action for this course would be we will do it for 3D. Okay. Instead of just 2D, this is the first week right? we covered it in first week already. Horizontal tangent, vertical tangent. But the following week we will do uh, for 3D. Okay. 
Yeah, so for example, like this computer here. So you can like see how this uh, gradient flow down. And then you'll see how this computer sits inside this 3D space. Okay, still talking about ideas. Let's go into what we have. Yeah. So in this uh, chapter, we only most interested in uh, three-dimensional vectors. Okay, four-dimensional so far, no one can imagine. So we should stop at three-dimensional for now. Okay, this means that uh, every number in T in the domain of R, there's a unique vector in V3, which we call RT. Okay, so uh, they collectively call this uh, vector here RT. Convenient. No need to keep repeating. So let me set it. So this is just a notation. We call this RT. Okay, just a name. The name of the vector. What's important is RT. Okay. So if FTGT and uh, HT are the component of the vector RT, then each of them is served a real valid function again, okay? which are called the component functions. And we can write it as uh, the following. So these are the two equivalent way to write uh, the vector function. Okay, last time we talked about it. So if you are relate back to your linear algebra, so you will write it as a column vector, but to be consistent, we will use this uh, first two notation. The third, the third uh, notation, I want you to link back to your linear algebra, what you have learned. Okay, um, so what's the key point here? We got component function, okay. or RT. Okay, so max is like this uh, because there are a lot of things we need to talk about. So we'll summarize the whole thing as one name. Okay, so we call this big vector here a uh, name. Okay, we so we call it RT. Okay, it's a convenient way to talk about FT, GT, HT. So you just say RT. So I know that this is the vector that you gave vector function you give. Okay, so whenever I talk about RT, you should imagine a vector function. Is it clear? Is it clear? Just a name. It's nothing special, it's just a name. Okay. Okay, so we have an example here. So we use T to denote the time variable or the independent variable. So you can see here, it says that it represents time in most application of vector functions. A vector, fun a vector value up function R of a real variable T associated with each real number T to a vector RT. Okay, just, just repeating what we are doing. Actually, we already did this in lecture one. Okay, right. So we are doing it again for three dimensional. Last time we do for two dimensional. Now we do for three dimensional. For example, uh, is this a vector value function? RT equals to T square I equals to E to the power T J plus 2K. Is this a vector function? Vector Y? Why? Why? Why is this a vector function? Yes. Why? I think I talked about five minutes about this definition. <laughs> so why is this an example? Huh? Why is this an example? Okay, first of all, we've got three components, and then, huh? Say again. So you have a real number input. Okay, you got one real number input, which is T, and then split up three component function. Okay, what, what are the three component functions here? T square, E to the power T, and two. So this means in the Z direction is a constant two function. Okay. Okay, so, uh, so in the x direction, okay, so you can imagine in the x direction, 
you run like this. Okay. In the y direction, you run like this. And then in the z direction, you run like this. So you try to put this three picture together and then see what's going on in 3D. You can try and imagine what's going on here. Okay. Do you want me to try and draw this or you want to imagine? Eh? You want to try and work it out? Okay. So maybe we can try and work this thing out. Oh, yeah. What's going on? What, what's wrong? Okay, okay. Okay. So, I mean, uh, so from here, right, you can see that um, it's constant at Z. So meaning it lies, lies at one x y plane which is when z equals to two right it's there at z equal to two okay let me let me let me give you uh so okay so these things right you should start with a setting or the ambient space okay so ambient space here is r3 okay so you live in r3 so you live in r3 okay so you got s y z here okay so and then you see that this function at z is always at z equal to two. Okay, always at z equal to two. Right. So it everything it do, it must happen at z equal to two. So you can imagine. So let's uh, imagine the plane at z equal to two. Okay. So in this case, I fix this point as zero zero two. Okay. So I push my axis up. Okay, let, let us make this plane into z equal to 2 plane. Okay, so let's look at this part here. Okay, does it make sense or not? Make sense? Huh? Okay. Uh, what should we do next? Um, so, so how to draw this t square and e t? So t square con uh, t square control x the value x here and okay? control the value x here and then t square is always positive okay so you never reach something negative in x square okay x I mean in x so this means your curve won't lie in this quadrant and this quadrant. Okay, all right, fair enough. Okay, so you only lie on the positive quadrant. Okay, so about how about et? Okay, et is also positive. Okay, so you lie in only positive quadrant of y. Uh, of y, yes. So you won't have this quadrant as well. So the only quadrant left is the. Uh, the one, it's the second quadrant. Okay, you only lie here. Okay. So, okay. how to draw? So when t equals zero, when t equals zero, so let us draw t equals zero. T equals zero is zero i plus e to a zero j. Okay, which is j. Okay. So meaning at zero point you start with one here. Okay, you start with one here. Uh maybe we can test another number. Uh R1. What is R1? R1 is I plus E J. Okay. So when x equals to one, you got J here. So maybe around here. Okay. And then you can see that. Uh, ET is keep increasing. Okay, so it, it increased as ET. So I think you should go. If you you should move like a ET. Yeah. Is alien or no? No. Um. So. Uh. So yeah. Okay. Let me let me change another color. So let me change my color. Change in my color so that it's clearer. Mm, hard to see it.
Yeah, so I predict is uh, this uh, particle will move like ET. Yeah, so starting from starting from this point, which is what's this point? Zero. Uh, zero. Hey, sorry, sorry, sorry. Should be one, one, zero, zero. Okay, and then you move like ET. Make sense? Okay. No, okay. Where? Where you lost? Where you lost? You are you are, are you guys following up to here? Huh? Up to this point, this two point. Okay. So after this two point, I straight away deduce that it moves like ET. Why? Right. Because if you sub in two again, you will get e to the power two. You sub in three again, e to the power three, and then you sub everything is like et. Is it okay? Does everyone follow? No? Mm. Mm. Zero, one, two. Which one? The starting point. Zero, one, zero, one, two. Oh, okay, correct, correct, correct. Sorry, correct, sorry. I. Yeah, correct. Zero, one, two. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is it okay or not? Anyone still confused? Ah. Uh, who confused? Yeah. Ask. You ask. 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 Quick. Others also confused. Quick, quick. E T O. E. I mean. <laughs> Wait, 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 what's going on? Uh, uh, ET 2D shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. This is a 2D shape, right? Because, because they fix, fix the Z component already. So you are not moving up and down. So you lie on the X, Y plane. So it's a 2D, yeah. I mean, mm. Yeah, you see a type. You see a type, correct? Bend out meaning you are increasing or decreasing in T, but this one is constant in T. Uh, const sorry, constant in Z. You get what I mean? So if you're going to move up or down, you will be changing on the Z direction. But there's no change in Z direction here. There's no change in Z direction. No, no, you're not, you're not, you're not changing the height of the graph. Hmm. Uh, it just tells you which level you're at. For example, you are at the first floor, you're at the second floor. Okay. So let's say zero is the ground floor. Okay. Now it's at two, so it's at the second floor. And get it on. Yeah. So whatever you move, you still move in within second floor. You don't go to first floor or you don't go to third floor. OK, so you stay constantly on the second floor. And then what happened is really you can do it on 3, 2D. OK, any one still confused why I got ET? Huh? OK. How about the rest? Expanded ET? Yeah. And then? Uh, you mean whether it gets stretched or not, is it? I think so. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 To be precise, maybe you need to talk about how stretched or how. A general shape is ET. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? Any other question? Yeah, so you it's better that you can imagine some kind of picture in your mind so that you know what you are doing. Okay. So let's go on. Okay. So before we do differentiation integration, right? Everything start from limit. So we need to define limit first. So how to take limit of a vector function? Okay. So we take limit of a vector function by taking limits of x component function. Okay, like what I said last time. You take limits at every 
function, okay, every component function. So if you have a vector function, ft, gt, ht, then you take the limit of the vector function, it's just taking the limit on ft, gt, and ht. Okay. So provided the limit of the component function exists. Okay. If the right hand side exists, the left hand side also exists. So what does the uh, another definition is uh, if it converges to L, if and only if um, the length, because now we're talking about vector, right? So before that, we talk about number. So number, we just minus, okay? Minus and then get the difference smaller, smaller, and smaller. But when you take difference of, when you say that a vector converges to another vector, okay? You take the difference, you still get out the vector. Right? So how, how do you say about the difference getting smaller? This is just computing the distance between the vector. Okay. So you take the difference of the vector and then you compute the length. So you count how far they are away. Okay. So you need to consider the uh, length of the difference of the vector. Make sense? Make sense or not? But makes sense or not? Huh? Okay, say again. So, okay. So when you talk, talk about two number approaching, right? Okay. So you can just compute the distance. Okay, okay let me just write it down. Uh, so, EG in uh, R. Okay. So we can talk about how close is four to two. Okay. So we just compute the difference, right? We just had a difference, which is two. And then we can, we will know that three is closer than two because the distance is one. Okay. But in vector how? Okay. So how close is uh, zero one vector to one zero vector? Okay. If we take the difference, we still get a vector. Okay, so how do you get the distance? You need to compute the length of this. Yeah, you can use dot product to compute the length of this uh, vector. Okay. Which is what it meant here. So if you converge to this vector here, I want these two vectors as close as possible. So I take the difference and then I take the limit. Okay. So I get a difference, I count the, uh, I compute the length. Okay, so you need to compute the length. So this limit, yeah. So limit usually work for real number. Okay, so this doesn't really make sense, but this part here, we know what's going on. Real number, we can do limit. Okay, so limit in the vector function is really limit on the length of the difference of the vector. This is the point here. At the back, confused or not? Please ask if you're confused. Okay. So the key point here is we know how to do limit on real number. So how to transfer vector limit to real number? We take the length. Okay, we take length. So we go back to real number case. And then we can do a limit. Okay. okay. Why I want to limit it? Oh, you mean why we do limit? Uh, why we do limit? This thing to talk about this. So why we do limit? I think this is a good question. So why we want to do limit? Uh, let's say we got these two things here. Okay, so this is a piecewise function where I define constant at any anywhere else. I also define constant at constant at that point, but at a different different point. So I jump. Okay, at that point I jump. Okay, so let me ask you. So. Here, maybe I pick y goes to 2. 
Okay, so let me ask you if I pick, okay, let me say here, four. Okay, here x, x equals four, y. So when x equals to 3.2, what is y? Uh, when x equals to 3.2, what is y? Uh, two. When x equals to 3.5, what is two? Two. When x equals to 3.697, what is y? When x equals to 3.999, what is it? 3.999999999999. But very close to 4 already, right? But still doesn't reach this uh, extra point here. Maybe I call it 6. Okay. So limit is like study this uh, infinite behavior of this function. Okay. So why we can do this actually? This has something to do with the real number actually. So real number is like very. My previous student. So I mean, yeah. I mean, wait, wait. So, so, so. I mean, what I'm trying to say is, you see, three between three and four, right? You can find infinitely many numbers inside here. Okay, and you never reach four. You still never reach four. Okay, you still never reach four. So if I zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, keep zooming. Okay, this uh, this is the limit. So if you keep zooming in, you still don't reach four. Okay. So this is, we want to consider the limit. So when X approaches something, we want to see what's going on. Okay. But when it is at four, jump to six. And okay. actually this, this says that this, um, this function is not continuous. Okay. Because if you approach this way, okay, and approach the other way, it doesn't equal to the value at that point. Okay. I will talk about this again. Soon. Now. Okay. So uh hey, what's going on? Huh? Why got the discussion there? Okay. So the theorem is uh R has a limit at T equals C if and only if. F G H has a limit at C. Okay. So limit only exists if every component exists. The limit for every component exists. This is what we mentioned just now. And then a uh, vector function R is continuous at A if limit to R T equals to R A. So there's three uh condition lying inside here. So limit R T right. In R, you have two directions to go to one number. Either you go from right, either you go from left. In 3D, you got more direction. Okay, you not only go from left, right on left. Okay, so let me let me open up your mind. Okay, so so okay, there are three basic vector space you should always keep inside your mind. So one is R, one is R2, the other one is uh, R3. Okay, maybe I put it here. Okay, R3. So in R, if you want to approach a point, you can go from right or left. Okay, right or left. In R2, okay, you have a plane, a 2D, direction coming in okay not just up and down not just left or right you can take linear combination on them okay similarly in r3 up down left right and then front back and then take linear combination of them so every direction will come in okay so this 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 is very important when you do partial derivative so when we do partial derivative we are doing along one line so this line can be slender, straight, or horizontal, or vertical. Okay, so different way we approach. Okay, so, so, yeah. So, when we go back to calculus one, right, it's actually left and right, okay? And then 
you see here, it's just, it doesn't just equal to some number. It has to equal to the value that taken by the function at that point. Okay, so meaning my function has to also agree with my limit at this point. Only then it is continuous. Okay, it, if it doesn't agree, then it is not continuous. Okay. You have to agree so that you can fill in the hole and then you, it is. Uh, so one way to see continuous, right, in a layman, layman talk is uh, you can draw without lifting up your pen. If you can draw the graph without lifting up your pen. And layman language. Okay. I mean, this, this work for, work for real value function. Draw the graph without lifting up your pen, and this graph will be continuous. Okay, so let's do some work before we go into break. Compute the limit of this uh, vector value function. Okay, I don't want to remind you. See if you can uh, apply what I say. So how to compute this? Okay, I give you about two, three minutes. If you get stuck, try stuck for two, three minutes. <laughs> then later we'll get unstuck. Okay, I think I some see some of you finish. So real value function, limit for real value function exists if the limit for every component exists. Okay, so you go and bring your limit into your component. So which is the best way I write it? Okay, I just I just bring the limit in. So to be precise, I need to put a bracket here. Okay. Does everyone start with this step here? Everyone start with this step or not? Huh? Does everyone start with this step? Okay. So what's the first thing you get? Limit t to zero, one plus t squared, t cubed, one. One i plus, what's that? Zero. Uh, sine t over t, you need to do L'Hopitaru. Okay, you need to do L'Hopitaru. So L'Hopitaru, what do you get? Let's write out the step. So L'Hopita rule is 
cos t over 1, which is i plus. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> another way to remember this uh, psi t over t limit to one. Did I mention to you this class? No, not yet. Okay. So, what does this mean here? Okay. So, if you compare the psi curve and the y equal to x curve, so when you get closer to zero, actually they meet up. And when you get, get closer to zero, then meet up. Okay, so equal to one. Let's see, uh, let me see where should we stop. Uh, final form. You mean for this question? Yes, it's a vector. I guess very good. So you need to always ask yourself whether now you're getting a vector or you're getting a number, okay? So you're computing a limit of a vector, so you get a vector. So if you get, if you start from 3D, suddenly go to something one dimensional, I mean one number, then you're losing some information. Okay? So we should stay on the same uh, space. Yeah, so depend on what you use first. So if this question start with IJK, so I keep with IJK. If you want to change the notation, I mean, okay, I just, I mean, follow the question. If the question use IJK, you use IJK. If the question use column vector, row vector, you use row vector. Column vector, column vector. Any other question? Maybe we take a break until nine o'clock. Mm. Uh, I, I think I figured it out. Mm. The last sentence you say is but uh, the graph is basically along the uh, ET. Mm. But mm. yeah, that's, I, I think if we over it from the Let's say we project it onto X, Y plane, uh -huh. right? I think the graph should be like this, doesn't it? It should be like uh -huh. the surface, but only shape like this. What do I mean? Okay,你要你的你的你零零零有在这个点，零零二，真的，就是你不要看这个嘛，就是因为这个，对对对，你不要看这个，那不就是这样子的吗？我不知道。没有啊，我算零点的时候，它是零一二啊，啊是零零二
，好像他的那个，他的这个 I 啊，他是跟着这个 ET 在增加是。如果没有 ET 啊，是这样子是吧？对，对对。I 跟着 T square 在增加，然后它那个 graph 是这样，它的这个 graph 是这样，就哦这个 graph 啊，这个 graph 活在这里面呢，活在这条是 graph 是这样子是啊，是活在 S S S 里面，嗯，是，都你有这个都还是讲话，我在找这个，哦，哎你你你你你你你，哦还有一个部分跑出来哈，还是不知道啊，这波形因为这波形它会有 I 呃那个 T square 嘛。我们看一下，有看一下，它有一部分哈、啊，我们只画出这一个是不是？我们只画出这个，这一个，哎，这个是吧？这个哎、欸，我们只画出这个 increasing 啊，这个怎样画出来？哦，跟说话，哦，对对对对对对对对对对，对，它是一部分啊，是那个，没有没有，因为因为因为因为一那个地方。I 过后比较小那个号子，哦，是是是，对对对对对对对，它那个地方有哦，哎不是，它是它没有这个地方，它里面比较矮，它是，它不是有那个小小个一除一的一个东西，它本来是一除的抛二在上面，下面变成一一 over 一除抛二，对吧 ？OK， 知道了，嗯，对啊，是这样，好的，恭喜恭喜，所以，它，廖以信，廖以信。廖以顺啊，顺，顺，嗯，顺，以顺。比如说这个是，比如说这个是，这是什么？想一下，来一个号码，刚才我们出来一吧，所以假设是一，一跟二，对不对？哎、嗯，可是一一跟二，但是你别想，你先你先想，是土地变钱，你把那个呃，我把那个再拿掉先。对对对对对，这边是一。啊哈，一二一二，最前面有一个东西吗？没有哪个地方呢？没有哪个地方呢？你先只画，也不是放哪个地方呢？还搬下去？啊，对对对，啊对对对，对对对，这个单一的对。对对对对对对对对对对对对对对对对对对对对对对对对对对对对对对对。对，对，来，对，对啊，对对对，对，我们少画一条线。突然就突然，哈哈哈哈哈。对，其实也是应该，嗯 ，OK， 不应该。喂，还有没有别的咖啡？啊，还怎么样？哦，你讲，你讲知道这一个咖啡？嗯你讲你讲这一个课吧你讲讲画这个 curve， 嗯嗯，是吗？哦、嗯，这个 curve 就是 OK， 这一条跟这一 t 活，这条跟这一 t 活。我看那个圈，看圈。再看一下啊，这一条。就是这。如果你要放这样子了，你要 precise 一点。变很乱。OK。那一边是 piece 外小啊。不是 piece， 呃，我们可以 define 它 piece wise。那那条上面的，嗯，我们可以把它看成 piece， 我们可以把它看成 piece wise， 啊，不可以没？不可以没？我这个也可以把它看成 piece wise， 它没有动，我这个也可以把它看成 piece， 没有问题嘞，有问题没？没有问题吧？没问题，只是说比较容易解释嘛，这条，这条。这条这条伸展到像 ET 一样，另外一个伸展这样 ET， 对吗？你刚才说的，嗯，那我啊，哦，这个是，我们要怎么画？对吗？那是，你不可以，你就 OK， 我听，你不懂，你听不懂，是你怎么可能？因为他们说，他们说我刚才少画了一条，嗯，为什么我少画一条？嗯，因为啊，在简易的时候，我刚才以为。一减一等于一亿，其实不是吗？嗯，一减一是一个更小的数字，所以在同样是，对，你看 t 等于一 ，t 等于减一，都是 t square 等于一嘛、嗯、，OK， 所以它都是在同一边，但是它有不同的 y value， 对吧？不同的啊啊啊啊！可以，所以这个啊。对，少了一部分，少了一部分，嗯，少了一部分。嗯、啊
，像你这个是这样，你这个是这样子还是这样子？这个这个一样，这个一样，这个一样，这样子，这里面它是这样子。对对对对对对对对对对。哦，这个这个这个这个来讲，一个是这个。像你刚刚那个都画错哦，你刚刚你刚刚是这样子画的。对啊，这个画对啊对啊，这个是上面一部分啊。这是否画 E T？ 这是否 E T？ 我什么少画了另外一条？它不是，那另外一条是子，那有点这样子。V 线。不不是从他那边看不是，而且从这里看的话，这条是什么、啊？因为你越大就越小哦。对，不是不是不是，你看你看你看你看你看你看，<笑>你看你 E T 不是？你看 E T 越来越大不是？他就你一除他不是越来越小？所以这边是你 crazy、啊。对啊，这里 crazy。对对，这个这个是一，好啊，有问题好吗？有问题。这个这个，对。一 e, e over e to power t， 不是不是这个这个这个这个中国这个中国这个是这条线上啊，是啊，是啊，是啊，对对对，因为无限靠近零哦，不是？啊对对对对对，这里这里会无限靠近零，然后这边这边 i 会这边一直增加一直增加。嗯嗯，没还有还有会还有会碰到零不会不会不会。他一直在长 ，horizontal。长一点，长一点是我是 J， 我是 E。嗯 ，E 跑。对啊，这样子会对我们少画一条。哦，假如假如你的 Z coordinate 是 x 的话，对啊，啊，对啊，没事啊，啊，听不懂。假如假如这个不是 constant 呢？这个话这里跟这里，这个不是 constant 哈、啊，就看你哦，看你，看它是僵直还是僵直，看你是还是直线，都可以哦，很多事情都可以发生的。它可以这样，这样，然后它这一只这个片都爆，你在这那个片都爆。是啊，如果你要在也就是直线，它就这样子；如果是弯的话，就这样子。你也可以随便玩法了。随便玩。啊，你可以这样，也可以这样。我最近把这个片子拉上来，片子。没有没有没有没有，不用不用不用，你是每一个点可以变化，每一个点都在变化都可以。做。不是整个片，就是 OK， 你要想整个片。一个点。哎。可以，等一下我们会有怎么说？ Okay. 我们把一个圆圈把它拆成一条路线。啊？什么 ？Space 啊？好像是 wire 吗？你是 space 拆成一条线，还是 circle 拆成一条线？是 circle 拆成一条线。circle circle 拆成。一条线可以拆成一条线吗 ？Sphere 啊。Sphere Sphere Sphere 不能线，如果你要拆，你只能够没有没有没有。哎呀，要怎样讲呢？没有，你的 s p h e r 不是？我猜的意思是说一条线不是？啊、我可以在 M point 那边把它剪掉。哦、我不是随便乱剪啊，随便乱剪已经不像你玩，不像。我求你可能就把它无限条线弄它这样。它是无限条 plane 是吗？对。s p h e r 你把它剪掉，它不是变成 plane？ 啊，也是啊，就是你可以像像榴莲这样啊。<笑>没没有，你把那个，<笑>不是，你把那个榴莲的那个壳，你拿那个尖的去掉，不是一个圆形咩？然后你把那个圆形把它拉出来，不是变尖掉？哦，你懂什么意思吗？哦，嗯，最大的开端，而且是差不多，差不多，差不多，差不多，差不多就是那个东西。啊，是，还有一个，来一个，我蛮想拿这个东西。一 T， 啊，一 T， 啊，你随便想到吗？没有没有，一开始一开始是。一开始是 E T 嘛，你现在 sub 的 value 全部是减 negative， 所以 OK， 所以我其实是 split 了我的。这么好有这个 idea 呢？没有没有没有，我是因为他是老师。不是不是不是不是不是不是不是不是不是。<笑> OK， 时间到了，其实我直接 explain 给全部人听。啊、oh, OK OK。Oh, shall we start? Start. Okay, sorry, I just now a lie here. <laughs> It's okay. I admit that. I huh? 
Okay, so let's uh, return what we started. Huh? Turn off. Okay. Okay, uh, so just now we have this. And maybe it work to repeat again. Now this is actually a very key point for you to imagine. Okay, so actually for me, for me, I prefer vector form. So let's bring it. Okay, so just now we agree that this curve, okay, this curve, Okay, first of all, how we know it is a curve? Okay, we know that it's a curve because it's one dimensional. Okay, because we only have T controlling. Okay. Yeah, if we will need to have two like higher dimensional, we need more variable, right? So one one variable, one dimensional. So we got a curve. But how this curve move? Okay, or where it move? So we can see that there's a constant here. So we like constant a lot. Okay. You like to rest, right? So we like to rest. Uh, particle also like to rest. Okay. So this means uh, it stay constant at the Z, Z axis. Okay. So it stay on the Z equals to two plane. Okay. Let's say that uh, we are lying on the X, Y plane at Z equal to two. Okay, so meaning here is this here, this point is zero, zero, two. Make sense? Everyone follow up to now? I start from beginning, huh? so I'll make sure everyone follow. Ah, I, I move, yeah, I move the XY plane up so that I can just draw on that. Yeah. Okay or not? Okay. 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 So next, we need to figure out what is happening on the x y plane. Okay. So we notice that uh, we notice what t square. Okay, t square alone is a positive function. Okay. So in the x variable, you will only get positive number. Okay. So meaning we don't want negative area, negative region here. Okay, is okay. So this one need to follow my orientation here. So negative to positive, negative to positive, negative to positive. This is the meaning of the arrow. Okay, so far okay. Huh? Okay, how about y y direction? So y direction, e t is also positive. Okay, ET is also positive. Right, ET is also positive. Okay, so where is ET positive? Or uh, where is ET negative? So ET negative, I mean, Y direction negative for these two parts. Okay, so the only part we can draw in is here. Okay, everyone follow? Follow, okay. So now is the time to determine the shape. Okay. Usually we usually uh, usually usually we split we split our t into uh zero. Okay. Greater than equal to zero and t less than equal to zero. Okay. Usually we do this. Okay. So what we did just now is we start with t equals zero. Okay, so let's start with a point first. Okay, where is this point? Okay, let's determine where is this point. R zero is zero, one and two. Okay, so we need to plot this point first. Zero one and two. Where is zero one and two? So somewhere here, maybe somewhere here. Okay. Zero one and two. This is one of the points. Okay. And let's see what the behavior at t greater than zero. Okay. Greater than equal to zero. Okay. 
So for example, take t equals to one. Okay. So if you take t equals to one, r one is equals to one e and two. Okay. So one e and two, where is it? So maybe I plot this as a one. One e and two e should be higher than one. So somewhere here. Okay. So e one one e and two somewhere here. Okay. I don't know how it curved. We just join them because this is continuous graph. So you just make some join. So you can see that if you plot more number in, okay, in the y value, what do you get? You get e to the power two, e to the power. Generally, you get e to the power n. Okay, so that's why I deduce that this curve will move like e t on the y direction. Okay, so move like ET is not formal here, but uh, move like. Or T gradient. So up to here, everyone follow on. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, okay. So what I tell Lai just now is I haven't cared about T less than equal to zero. Okay, just now we didn't talk about T less than equal to zero. Because at first I thought it's the same, so I'm not going to pursue that. But if you try to, for example, let us uh, uh, substitute t equals to minus one. Okay, what do we get? We get minus one squared e to the minus one and then two. Okay, so we get one, one divided by e and two. Okay. 1 divided by e is greater than e or smaller than e? Smaller than e, right? Okay, so this means over this what x equals to 1, we have 1 over e here. Okay, we have this point. So maybe we will join it here. Okay, so how to join? Actually, there's a question how to join here. Okay, how to join here? So if you join it like the vertex, this means it is not differentiable. Okay, you got a spike. Okay, or squeeze. So okay, so usually if you see something like this, right? Okay, this point is not uh, differentiable. Okay, but in our case here, these are all differentiable functions. So you should join smoothly here. Okay. Okay, why we can join it? Because this curve is also continuous at zero. At that point, I mean, yeah, continuous at that point. So um, you can join it together. Okay, so keep going. So let's take more number from uh, t less than equals zero. So maybe take minus two. What do I get for minus two? I get four e one over e squared and two. Okay, so at this, uh, we have uh, four e square two at the top. I mean, in the plane, and then on the other side, we have four um, one minus e square and two. So you can keep on in here. Is it okay? Is it okay? Okay. So, so the question is how this another part of the curve move like. Move like what function? One over e to the e. Okay. And, or we can just put uh, we can put modulus here to measure this is positive. I just making sure that it's positive. Okay. Okay, otherwise, uh, okay, let me make it consistent. So, here move like, the other part move like. Move like. One over E T for T less than equal to zero. Okay. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, another way to think about this is uh yeah, there shouldn't be a band here. 
shouldn't be a pen here. So let me let me shouldn't be a pen here. So let me quick sketch. Okay. So uh, when you draw this uh, space curve, right? Um, you should think of a whole real line, and then how this real line change inside or wire. How this wire uh, change inside three D space? Okay. We will see more example later. We will see more example. Hey, so far okay or not? For this example, okay. So far. So, ah, ah. Uh, hey, please, please listen to your friend, what your friend says. Value also different. Mean. Okay, you really want to go detail, is it? No, no, no. no. <laughs> okay, so I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, okay, T square is a bit weird, huh? T square. Why I say it's weird? Because within zero and one, right, it decreases the number. For example, 0 0.01, you fit into T square, it gives you 0 0.001. Decrease within zero and one it decrease. Okay. But after one, one, two become four, three become nine, and then four becomes sixteen. Okay. So you need to put this factor into your deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean E E is E T square is. Every time is very weird. So you need to split your interval up from zero to one and then one to anything else. Okay. Yes, just two line. Just two line. No, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. One way to check whether it's a surface or two line, you can just take the point that you think is in there and then fit into that. Can you find T or not? Cannot find T, then it's not in the equation. Okay, let's continue. Huh? Continue. So this is the idea we talked about just now. So space curve. Okay. So just now we draw a space curve. So here says that there is a close connection between continuous vector functions, vector functions, and space curves. So suppose we start with three uh, real value functions because we care about three D. Um, then the set of all points that satisfy the three function we call it a space curve. Okay. So because we got one variable only, right? So T, so line is a one variable thing. So you have one variable. And uh, one, the three two equations here are called parametric equations. So these are nothing special, is the parametric solution you see in your linear algebra. It's really the same. Okay, they call it differently. And then T is the parameter. So you can change the time. Time is your parameter. So you can think of the C as a half that traced out by the moving particle. This one I already talked about it in the lecture one. Okay. Uh, yeah, at a certain T, RT is your position vector. And then yeah, the, the key point is this one. Key point is this one. So the final line is the uh, upshot of this paragraph here. So any continuous vector function again okay, continuous huh? so you can draw your graph without lifting your hand okay yeah. define a space curve that is traced out by the tips of the moving arm okay so for example this okay you have a you have a, a vector function and then you consider all the position and then you join them up together so this is uh just now we work out quite detailed one example right so you should keep that example in your mind whenever i talk about vector function you keep that example in your mind okay remember that i forgot to tell you the other part of the curve okay 
so you will remember. Again, so remember the example. So you can see that in 3D, we have more freedom here. You see, they seem crossing each other, but actually they didn't cross. Okay, they go to uh, different, uh, different, yeah, they didn't cross each other. They don't self-intercept. Okay, you can move the intersection away, either to the front or to the back. Okay, so this is one extra thing we can do in, uh, extra thing we can do in 3D. Okay, because in 2D, if you cross, then it may not be differentiable anymore. Okay, but in 3D, we can move the intersection away, but still continuous. Okay? Because we move away from one dimension. They have freedom to do. Okay, so I'll repeat again, a space curve can be defined parametrically by the three component vectors. Okay, so these are different way to write down the uh, vector function. Okay, one is space curve, space curve, the other is vector function. Yeah, two different ways to write down uh, saying the same exact same stuff. Okay, so is it is this what we did just now? We put t equals zero and then see where's the point, t equals one, where's the point, and then t equals minus where's the point, and then we join them up together. Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay, so, okay, now, about try and see what curve is this. Uh, let you try. What curve is this? Let you spend about one, two minutes. Try what curve is this. And then see if you can show that it is the curve that you think it is. Does anyone feel familiar with this um, vector function? Feel familiar? I mean, yeah, you know. uh, let's say if I write it in this format. In this form, familiar or not? Too much, too much, not so far. No, 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 too much, too much, too much. Huh? Yeah, just a straight line. Or, I mean, first, first thing I imagine of this is the solution to some homogeneous equation, okay, or now space solution, something like that. But, yeah, so it's a vector plus a point. Again, vector plus a point. So vector plus a point, uh, what do we get? A line. Yeah, okay, we get a straight line. So, what should we do? So we will say that the point is one, two, minus one, and then direction vector is one, five, and six. Okay. Uh, so this is a, uh, let me put down. So I'll describe, so how to describe a line. Okay. So what's the information you need for a line? Enter enough point, so you should say a line that passes the point passes through the point minus one and or with direction vector or I can say parallel to the direction uh, one five six. So 
Another way to write it is uh, the parametric equation. Okay, you should know both way. Okay, you should uh, recognize both way. So if I want to write it as parametric equation, is what? So think of think of the solution to homogeneous equation. So we should put here x t, y t, and z t. Okay. So if I want to change it to parametric equation, that's me. I will write x equals to one plus t, y equals to two plus five t, z equals to minus one plus six t. So parametric equation means I can uh, study coordinate by coordinate. Okay, I got three equations for my coordinate. So you should be able to recognize these two forms. Actually, they are the equivalent form. Okay, if I ask you to write parametric equations, you need to write parametric equation. If I, will, I ask you to write vector function, you should write vector function. Okay, if the question gives you vector function, you should know how to work out the x, y, z component. Okay, so you need to go between, go back and forward with this. Uh, Okay, next. Okay, now next we up a level. We go up a level. So what is the curve defined by this uh, vector function? So we have cos t on the i component, sine t on the j component, but a t at the k component. Okay, so first. At the first class, we only know about cos t i and sin t j. Okay, so in this class, we play around with the term as is. So, what should this uh, curve look like? Cylinder, the whole cylinder. Only curve, or this is curve only. It's not a surface. Ah, stack. No, I mean this is a curve. <laughs> Spiral, okay. This is spiral ring. Okay, why is this spiral ring? Because t is increasing when time is increasing. Okay. So from the first first two right, we know it's a circle. Okay. Okay, it's a circle. So from the first two, we know it's a circle. But why is it a circle? Because when we put t equals to zero, two pi, they are the same. Okay. But in this case here. In the z coordinate, two pi and zero same or not? Different, right? Okay. So in the z coordinate, they should split. Okay. So they should like um, should how should go around and then go up. So so meaning you like you cut the circle at the zero point so you cut the circle and then you spiral up okay. and every time you increase every time you increase anyone have rubber band or not a rubber band ruler cannot i need a circle thing ah, your, your your ruler is band one ah. later i <laughs> snatch any rubber band no rubber band Okay, never mind. Okay, so okay, so the picture is like this. Okay, so you take a circle and then you cut it. Okay, and then you every part it move up a little bit. Okay, and then when the time increases, keep going. Then this spiral thing will keep going, and then keep spiral down as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Just now, um, Hongming used one software to plot it. Right. You can, if you are, have trouble, uh, imagining, you can try uh, the software called the uh, GeoGebra. You can search online. Okay. You can search search this and then try and draw. Algebra. 
OK. Thanks. OK, now let's try to uh, find a vector equation and parametric equation for the line segment that join P and Q. OK. Any idea how to start first? Let's say how to start first and then I let you do. How to start? OK, find PQ vector, good. And then? Find PQ vector and then? The line equation is just L equals to P times VT. Okay, yeah. Yeah, try to work it out. Let's see if we can get the same answer. Are you guys slow? Manage compute PQ. Uh, but any problem? Question. Okay, so does everyone get the vector equation or not? Parametric equation? Yes, okay. Did anyone put down domain or not? No, oh, so this question doesn't just ask about line. It asks about line segment. Okay, so you need to cut that line. It, it only care about the segment. Okay, the picture is like this. So it only care about the segment. Doesn't care about the whole line. Hey. No. And. It, it actually is the same because I, last time, as I talk, uh, mentioned with Redis before, if you put the other direction, you become minus one, right? But minus can be absorbed. Okay, wait. For a line, for a line, minus will be absorbed into T because you consider the whole real line, right? But in this case, we got this uh, domain here, so you need to work, be careful with the domain. Be careful with the domain. Yeah, be careful with the domain. Your domain may be changed. Okay. The the good the good the good point here is because our t can start from zero to one. Okay. When t is equal to zero, right? 
So when t equals zero, so when t equals zero, okay, we start at p, okay, and then when t equals to one, we finish at q, okay, we finish at q. When t equals to one, we finish at q. When t equals to zero, we start with p. Okay, we choose p as our point. So if you start from q, then your t zero maybe start from q. T one and P. Okay. Now you can try out if you want. You can try out. Yeah, you can try out. Oh, another thing is uh, there's there's actually one point here. The point, the, the, the question already tell you join the P to Q. I'm not sure this have orientation meaning or not. Let's say if there's a meaning here, so P to Q or Q to P, follow the question. What? What do you mean? PQ or QP? PQ equals to minus QP. Uh, so, yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's say assume this question have orientation, okay? From what point to what point? So if say P to Q, then you start from P, T0 start from P and then E1 start and then Q. Huh? Yeah, P to Q. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Any any problem, other problem with orientation or not? Okay, so next, uh, next, find a vector function that represents the curve of intersection between the cylinder and the plane. What to do here? Okay, we got a cylinder formula, uh, I mean equation, we got a plane equation. So we want to find the intersection. We have to find the intersection. Stop. Mm. Yeah, stop. Uh, you can stop. So how to stop? Uh, how to stop? Stop what? Substitute what? Find any combination there of both. What do you mean by that? Yeah. Okay, you mean you just find the section point. Okay. But we want to write it as a vector function. So we want it want to write it as a space curve. Okay. Something in T. Right. Something in T. So we want to write something in T. Okay. So we want to write everything in T. Because the intersection, what you get is just a curve, right? But a slanted. Uh, or ellipse, slanted ellipse in this case, right? Ellipse, slanted, yeah, slanted ellipse. So, this is in particular, this is a space curve. Why? What's so funny? Why you keep laughing? Okay, huh? Okay, so what to do? Okay, so for the curve, uh, I mean, for the point on x square y square, so let me put there. x square y square. We know that this x y have to satisfy what s equal to cos t and y equal to sine t. Okay, but now you want uh, you want this. Okay, let's think about it another way. So you want to satisfy one y plus z equals to 2. Right. So this means that there's some relation between y and z. Okay. So when your y move, it affects how z move. Right. So now you already know how your x and y move. Now you need to figure out how your z move. 
or what to do. And then I tell you how, why is it related? Okay, I repeat one more time. So I repeat one more time. So now we know how X and Y move. Okay. And then I tell you the relation between Y and Z. Y plus Z is equal to two. Okay. So how I figure out how Z move? Huh? So you do the substitution, right? Okay. So how to figure out how Z move? So y plus z equals to two. Z equals to two minus y. Z equals to two minus seventeen. Okay. So when y move as sine t, z move as two minus sine t. Okay. Okay. So, so now we get function for x, for y, for z. So we can put all of them together. So vector function. Yes. Cos t, sine t, and 2 minus sine t. So the t is running from 0 to 2. So far, okay. This question, okay. For more questions, you also do like this. Okay, let's go a little bit further. Okay, go a little bit further. We do this. Ah, do this, ah. Okay, let's let's try. I also don't have this answer, eh? so let's try. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, let's try. What's this? What's this? Just now we can write our circle in terms of cos and sine. So how to write paraboloid with x? Okay, so since the plane is y equal to x, right? So for sure, for sure, your let me let me um, predict something first. So these two have to be the same value. Okay, mt and mt. Okay, and then what about the third one? Okay, so how the third get related to the the previous two? So four y x squared plus z squared. Okay, so what is z? So z squared is equals to four y minus x squared and then take square root. Okay, x square root. So this is the relation between these two. But we know that y and x is the same. Okay. So maybe something like this. Okay, but this seems a bit ugly. Um so how? Uh -huh. mm. Mm. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Oh, you want to do that again? Okay, seems like it, huh? Okay, seems like it. So, so the idea is uh, that y equal to x. Okay. Or y 
x squared plus z squared become 4x equals to x squared plus z squared. Okay, so I mean, um, the, yeah, okay, never mind. So keep going. So from here, can you recognize this is a equation of a circle? Can. Okay, maybe we move it around again. It's a circle, shifted circle. Okay, so implies what? So you can uh, add 4 plus 4 minus 4 plus 4 minus 4. Zero. Good, yeah, we want to make it at a zero. Yeah, completing the square. So, which we get x minus 2. Okay. Plus, plus x square. Okay. So, what's next? Uh, wait, let me move down again. So, in this case, x minus 2 is equal to 2 cos theta z okay maybe you use t in this case z equals to two theta okay which means that our x is two cos theta plus two okay but we know that y goes to x so this implies that y is also equal to two cos e plus two okay so we got x y z now so i put them together so the vector function is two cos t plus two two cos t plus two and then two sine t okay so yeah so one 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 um uh, one one advantage of writing in sine and cos, right? You don't need to put this square root thingy. Okay, so you don't need to put square root if you go through this uh, cos sine. That's why we sometimes we prefer to go into polar graph. Because polar graph we can write as function. If you want to write in xy coordinate, uh, most probably you cannot write as a function. So we will have this kind of piecewise thingy coming up, cos minus. Okay, any question or not for this question? Any, no? Go, 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 right? Uh -huh. This one? How, how, how does this come out? Okay, okay. So this, this is the, last time we talked about the shifted, the, the general, okay. So let me write down. Uh, the, general formula for circle center at HK with radius R. This is the general formula for uh, circle that center at different center other than zero, zero and radius R. So the idea is, so how you remember the formula is, you just uh, take the square root of this number here, become your radius, and then put in front your cos. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the thing we derived last time, if you want to check back, and then compare these two. So every example right, we do is, we will use it for future. But whatever we do, we use, use it for future. We don't do for fun. Right? We, saw, we do this and in future we use it. Any other question? Other question? Other question? Other question? Other question? Okay, so if no more questions, please go back and do a tutorial question and then we'll see you next week. Huh?